would like, uh, if I may, to take you on a strange journey. All right, everyone, welcome to another interview edition of Real Estate Realities with the Rebel Broker. Today's guest is Linda Liberatore. She is a author and founder and president of My Landlord Helper, a unique virtual assistant solution for DIY real estate investors. Welcome to the show, Linda. Uh, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. It provides such a great service to bring this information out to your listeners. Well, you know, it's really, it's about uh, leaving value on the table for the folks that are listening. And you've got some interesting stuff to chat about. And I love that the two books that you have written uh, that I was able to find, one, the Real Estate Investment Goals book, I think is one we can chat about, but also your keys to managing real estate investments and achieving explosive growth and saving money are two great topics because it fits in perfectly with the folks who are going to listen to the show. But before we get into that, can you give us sort of a little bit of your background? What got you where you are? Um, a lot of hard work, I'll start with that, <laughs> a lot of hard work. Um, I worked a lot with technology, I worked with um, kind of technology training for you know, national and international companies and did a lot with taking a look at and how technology you know, streamlines so much process. And because of that, uh, I had also worked with real estate investors, I'll call it kind of more on the side. Um, helping them a little bit with bookkeeping, but then also helping them implement technology solutions for management. Mm -hmm. So I would say, and you're probably aware of this as anybody, that real estate field was a little bit behind so many other fields when it came to technology solutions. You know, all anybody really knew was the MLS, and beyond that, uh, there wasn't a lot going on in the way of technology solutions. So you can imagine property management was even further behind, if you will. Right. So I kind of just through some, I'll call it some experiences that I had, I kind of took the concept to this developer and we just talked about, you know, what can we do to help with the whole collection process that, you know, for a small landlord, sometimes that can be such a huge stumbling block, you yeah. know? So that, that was it. That's what got us started. And, uh, but I'm just trying to help people, really, you know, like yourself, you know, you just see people out there struggling and they just need some, some kind of assistance, if you will. Yeah, you know, it's funny. You mentioned sort of the world of real estate lagging behind in technology. And I, I was first licensed in 1988. So back then it was still uh, a little keyboard with a thermal printer built into it. So when you mm -hmm. wanted to – <laughs> and, and books, right? You'd, you'd get your weekly – updated books from the MLS that you could rifle through to try to see what was new. And it might have one black and white front photo of the property. Um, and back then I was dragging around a Mac plus and an image writer printer, uh, it w which was high tech for the time. And so I'd be, I was taking all the forms and I was computerizing them so I could fill them out on my computer and print them out. And everyone thought I was nuts uh, for, for doing that. But yeah, you make a good point. And, and it takes people like you who see how technology is being used in other areas to realize how it can be leveraged in the world of real estate and not just between agents, but for folks who are out there investing actively and making that technology work for them. Uh, yeah, you know what? I bet you really appreciate your listeners too. One of the things I just read today, probably a couple hours before we're talking it was so interesting, you, um, that Inman site, you know, where they were talking, there was a big article on there about, like, technology and where it's going. Right. And sometimes people kind of get stuck looking for the, I'll call it the software solution that's specific to an industry. And yet, it, it was one of the comments was one of the technologies that really kind of really shaped the real estate over the last few years was, like, the DocuSign. Oh, yeah. And you think of that, like, you know, you think of that, right? It wasn't that somebody went out there to design something for real estate, yet that rocked your world. That just, I know it changed the rental world. Well, and you know, you know what? It down. changed everything. I mean, it, and what, what really yeah. stunk was we had the 2006 downturn and suddenly the robo signatures that happened with a lot of those mortgages in terms of when they were transferred from owner to owner to owner to owner when they were being sold in the secondary market got mixed up with what DocuSign does, right? Yeah. 
Um, for those of you who right. are longtime listeners to the show, you know the difference is DocuSign is a way to digitally verify that an individual is signing the documents relating to the purchase of a home. The other thing is totally different. It was not the same thing, but so many institutions bundled though that concept into one concept that we suddenly had companies that wouldn't accept digital signatures for a while. And it was like going back to the dark ages in terms of getting things done. How about it? I mean, it just, it, it really revolutionized that industry. I know, like I said, I have, I still work with landlords, the smaller ones, where they don't have that. And when we say to them, you know, they're like, well, I don't think my tenants, you know, like they think it, it's an economic challenge. I'm like, no, every tenant in every area has a cell phone with an email and watch this. And generally within four minutes, we've got the signature desk yeah. that they yeah. were wait, waiting for two weeks, two weeks for, you know? Well, and so the, the other big difference is, and I'm not, this is, it's kind of a double-edged sword, right? So it has also very much facilitated, although that would already happen really with fax machines, but uh, this idea that you don't present your offers in person anymore. Um, I really liked presenting offers in person. I often find it gave me a little bit of an edge, but what's interesting about what it facilitates is totally streamlining a process and and taking the the personal side of it even more out of it. And I'm not really sure that's a benefit so much to a lot of buyers because I think by reintroducing the personal, you can often give your offer an edge over someone else's. But yeah, it, there's no question that the 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 key to this, I think, is less worrying about what solves my real estate problems and getting more detailed. What solves my problems about getting signatures? What solves my problems about collecting the rent? What what solves my problems about uh, poking folks who owe me money until I get paid? Right? Though some of these support things that probably play more yeah. into what your solution is. Right? So so don't think of it as a real estate problem. Think of it as a collections problem, and then suddenly you're looking at solutions that are just inundated with varieties of folks trying to service that industry, right? Right, exactly. And I think I, you brought up a really good point. I think that is true on the purchase of a home when you brought that up, like when you can picture people sitting down at the table and going back and forth and explaining, you could probably get a better edge to signing a contract and getting that more in touch. So that, that is probably... Uh, I'll call it a little bit of a disservice, but I guess when you get multiple offers on the table, yeah, that's where that uh, digital yeah. signature. I can't even remember you know, the last time. I guess once they lose once or twice, you know, then it's speaking up. That was an interesting comment. Yeah. I can't remember the last time I was given the opportunity to present my offer in person when there were multiple offers. I think the last time was probably 94, 95, maybe. Um, and it was, it was every, you know, the, the old days when yeah. you'd wait, sit in the waiting room and wait for your name to get called to come in and present your offer. Um, it was, uh, it, that just had, doesn't happen anymore. Just, there, that kind of connection just doesn't. Yeah. Occur. All right. So let's try, yeah. let's take a second to figure out what, it, who is the person that's going to benefit most from the services that you offer in terms of helping DIY investors? Are these folks who already have five properties? Is this someone who has one property? What, what's, what's the right person to reach out well, to? Yeah, the way I would describe it is it can be somebody who's starting with just one property. Our average client, I'll put it this way, our average portfolio, and again, you know what, whether they look for me or someone else, that's not the point, but they, they should be looking for um, some kind of variation of where they start out, they're buying their investment property, and they're people that are wanting to grow and gain more investment property. So their they're long-term gain. I'm sorry, goal is to put together a portfolio of investment property. They are looking to slowly accumulate that. So sometimes it's somebody with one because they're working full time and they don't have, let's just say it's a doctor or a dentist. They, they don't have access to a phone, let's say, during the day. Mm -hmm. They can't be disrupted with phone calls, that kind of thing. So sometimes, yes, they'll come to us with as small as one property or a portfolio as small as one property. And then other times, you know, we had a, one of our uh, biggest clients, or long, longest clients, I should say, he started out with like 30, and he's just approaching about 200 right now. Um, and the man just works, a um, really, really super hard worker, and that's his goal, you know, is to get this portfolio moving. And he just 
it is really sharp, I will call it kind of in the auction arena mm-hmm. and, uh, and making those good offers, let's say, you know, whether it be an auction or MLS or off market property. So when you stop and think about, you know, he shouldn't be on the phone taking a call about a broken toilet, right? Because right, he right. could miss an auction where he's going to lose $5,000 because he didn't get his dinner, you know, or 10 or 20, you never know. So, that his area of expertise, he's just honing in on making sure he's using his time correctly. So we say, well, if they think like, uh, I'll call it lawyers or accountants, and they think like people that bill by the hour, then they realize that this is the mundane task that they've got to, you know, push down a little bit so that they can take, you know, their highest and best use of time. You know, it's just, I imagine you go through this all the time with real estate agents, you know, probably in the training, when you're training new employees or, you you know, you're trying to make sure that they understand, you know, don't get caught up in the data entry. You can get somebody to do the data entry for you make sure you're the guy on the phone and right. closing those deals, you right. know? And just to be clear, this is all the right. service you're offering is more of a virtual assistant sort of property management system versus because you're not going to have anybody obviously on the ground. These are, you're doing basically all the things that you can do virtually. Right. In fact, we have a really, another good story that maybe your listeners could relate to. We have a woman that's out of California and she's also a long-term client of ours. And she invests out of state in Georgia. And she has what we refer to as her boots on the ground. Is her leasing agent out in Georgia, and she has a, I'll call him a contractor. He handles all her rehabs, and he coordinates the maintenance. Mm-hmm. So the work forward will get the phone call. But first off, when they sign the lease, they put our phone number out there and our email, so we're their point of contact. And so if a work order comes in, it comes to our office, and we go directly to her uh, boots on the ground, her main uh, maintenance guy, mm-hmm. and then he'll, you know, schedule it with the tenant. And then between, you know, we'll follow up with the tenant to make sure it's done. He texts us back to let us know it's done. We've got pictures of everything. We're really awesome on, you know, software and documentation. And then that's, you know, she she loves it. <laughs> she loves it. And, and what's she's in typically that's what's the, the fee? Importantly. We only charge fifty dollars a unit a month, and we are going through a little reassessment. But I would say, for certain, for your listeners, if it, you know, if anybody wanted to follow up, it's fifty dollars a unit a month. Okay. Okay. Um, so it's it's really affordable, and uh, I don't know if you know much. I don't want to start throwing out softwares, but some people know there's a lot of softwares. Property where build the um, manager. Mm-hmm. Um, so if they're really small. We don't want to see them go into that. We'll put them right into our software. We could do ACH debits. I forgot to mention. So we collect the rent along the way. Mm-hmm. And we could do ACH debits. We'll do the legal notices. We'll type the lease renewal for them. Um, yeah, lease renewals are really big when somebody only has one or two properties. Mm-hmm. you got to be on top of that. You know, so by 90 days before expiration, we're sending automatic emails to the owner to, you know, verify what amount they want to renew at because you don't want to lose a day's rent. And in right. a lot of these really hot markets, you want to make sure, like, especially the, uh, you know, urban areas, we've got tenants moving out literally at, you know, three o'clock on the 31st and the new tenants are coming in on the 1st, you know, the next morning. So you've got to really fine tune that process. Most importantly, you just don't want them to leave. You just right. want to offer an attractive, you know, a lot of money gets lost on the turnover. So if you can get that fine-tuned, we really help them work with that. I don't think all new investors get that, you know. And you know what? Something else. I mean, you're, you're addressing a need uh, that I hear a lot. Um, I, I talk to folks who are interested in investing, folks who are sort of trying to get the groundwork going or, or get enough knowledge that they feel comfortable jumping in. And one of the things they bring up every time uh, for, for as a first investor concern is getting that phone call at two o'clock in the morning and right. your service basically eliminates that. It takes the headache part out of it. It, it sort of blends uh, full on property management with still doing it in a DIY basis enough, but you're still insulated from the really annoying phone calls and even the emergency phone calls. 
Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. That's exactly how I describe it. So we're making sure that somebody's there to man the phone. Because, you know, in today's world, I, I think I, the other thing I'd say is, you know, we used to think of the two in the morning phone call as the emergency. But I'll call it the culture that we're in right now. We're in a 24-7 world. So the two in the morning call might just be the nurse that got off the shift. It might just be, you know, I'll call it the millennial that's thinking about something that they want repaired. And they're either going to go online or they're going to text us. They can text us. They can call us. So it's not necessarily that they're looking for a solution. They're just emptying, I'll call it kind of their inbox, right? They're clearing their head of things that that they wanted to get off their plate. So we get a lot of those calls, but it's not necessarily meaning they want somebody else, you know? Gotcha. Well, that's pretty amazing, and I think it absolutely fits in with with the needs of an awful lot of folks who are looking for something like that that don't want to pay some bloated percentage to other property management firms. Um, Now, there's a few more things I want to chat with you about. Firstly, how to get in contact with you, but before we do, let's take a quick break, and uh, we'll be right back after this. Are you ready to jump in and start your search for your first investment property? Maybe you've decided that it's time to own your own home, or maybe you're ready to sell your home and move on to something new. No matter what your goal is, The Rebel Broker can help. That's right. Aside from hosting this show, I am also the owner broker of White Lawn Sons Real Estate Services right here in Silicon Valley. With over 25 years experience serving Silicon Valley, Morgan Hill, San Martin, and Gilroy, I or one of my great agents can help you achieve your goals in real estate. So if you're ready to look into taking that next step towards achieving your real estate goals, point your browser at www.soldbyrobert.com. That's www.soldbyrobert.com and get in touch. Let me show you how I will earn your business and your respect. Again, that's www.soldbyrobert.com or you can call me at 408 852 0525, California Bureau of Real Estate ID 00984909. Welcome back, everyone. We're continuing our conversation with Linda Liberatore. She has shared with us kind of an interesting service that that gives you a lot of the things that would satisfy the concerns of someone who's an investor relating to managing a property, particularly a property that's distant. You used an example of a client. You have Linda who lives in California and has a Georgia property. And I think that's a perfect example. I, I encourage my listeners to let the math tell them where they should invest, even if that means a property that's potentially 2,000 miles away. And your service tends to bridge that 2000 mile gap. It tends, I think, to add a level of comfort that a lot of folks uh, would feel uh, beneficial in their investment strategy if they were to embrace investing out of their local area. Yes, absolutely. I think, you know, one of the things it does, and we've had the clients come back and tell us this, that it was not something like we really like they thought about, mm-hmm. um, but it allows them to go through and let's say, pick a different vendor here, make a different relationship there. But the face to the tenant doesn't change, and they're able to make good business decisions and change things on the back end without the tenant having to realize that, you know, well, maybe this person didn't work out. So they're right. able to keep a nice, consistent front, and then they go ahead and make the hiring decisions and the right business decisions on the back end, you know. Now, if someone wanted to find out more about the service you offer and see if it fits for them, how would they get in contact with you? Well, you know, one of the things we could do, especially for your listeners, is we offer a 30-minute strategy session. And at this time of the year, it's really essential because we're looking at, what, the end of September, the end of the third quarter. So if they're trying to think about, you know, how can I start out 2018 by doubling this portfolio? Right. I know too much time on the phone. Not enough time at the auctions, not enough time, you know, switching out with you and taking a look at what houses they can get, you know. So we always say, why don't they sign up for a free strategy and for certain, there would be no charge for anybody that's listening here. So that would be just at mylandlordhelper.com slash free. So it's mylandlordhelper.com slash free. Okay. Or they can just email me direct. You know, that's no problem whatsoever. It's Linda L. at securepay1.com. Okay. And they could just, you know, tell us, tell, mention your show, and we'll be glad to help them any way they could, you know. 
that's I mean, I'm glad that, that we've got a place where we can send them. And thanks for letting everyone know about that free offer. I think maybe being able to spend some time and chat about their situation and their goals will help them decide if it makes good sense. So it's, it's good that you're offering that service. Now, something else I wanted to hit. Uh, Because even before this, before folks need to make a phone call and find out how they might use your services to help them manage a piece of soft, uh, a piece of uh, real estate, they have to get past all those things that hold them back. And we have spent a pretty good amount of time on this show trying to, to lay that first stone down on a foundation of real estate success. And so often those are things that have absolutely nothing to do with how much money you have. Um, there's there's plenty of ways to get into the business and start moving without a whole lot of cash on hand. It's not necessarily about first figuring out what area you want to invest in. Sometimes it's overcoming personal stuff, um, getting yourself motivated and and getting those goals going. And I was happy to see that you've written a book. I mentioned it at the beginning of the show, uh, Daily Inspirations to Achieve Your Real Estate Investment Goals. And I'm assuming this is aimed squarely at those folks. Would that be right? It it sure is, and I can't believe you brought it up because that was, um, that really was exactly the intent. Um, There's so many times, I try to, first of all, I try to kind of live a, I'll call it a daily discipline in the morning, Mm -hmm. just in my habits, and, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, a small spiritual, a small quote, whatever it is, I try to read it every day just to be that consistent. And that's when I was talking to one of my landlords, and we were kind of talking about it, and I said, you know, I really should write a book that would have like a little something to read about real estate every day to kind of, I don't know, inspire you is the word I said. It, it just to kind of get them like, I'm going to do this. I am going to do this. I'm going to take a little action every day. So I, I hope that, you know, if any of your listeners, if anybody read it, uh, you know, it, it just, that's the whole point. I think you're right. You just have to, you have to take action. There's no doubt you have to take action. It's not. It's not nearly as hard as people think. And what's interesting is you. T- if I'm if I'm understand it correctly, it's not just a daily motivational thing, but it also offers things to learn about landlording along the way, right? Oh, absolutely. Yep. It's just, it's just. It is a. It's like a small passage. I'll call it. You know, kind of like a paragraph a day, introducing a topic. Let's say, and then of course they can go deeper in it. So. It's just a, a scratch the surface, talk about, you know, homeowners associations maybe we'll touch today. And the next day, maybe legal notices. And so it's just enough to make you think about, you know, these are all the things that kind of go into it, depending on where you invest and what you're doing, you know? Yeah. Well, good. I'm and, 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 the, the, the idea that folks need to start there, so many folks skip it. Um, and, and I'm not... I'm not the guy that goes to the motivational speeches. I'm I'm not the guy, and as a real estate person, anyone else who's ever had their real estate license and worked in an office is very familiar with the office meeting, right? Where it starts off with Eye of the yeah. Tiger playing and Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's never that, yeah. that has always felt so kind of saccharine to me <laughs> that it it actually annoys yeah. me more than it helps me. But the idea of having a personal thing where I can sit there, I can read something and reflect on it a little bit is something that entices me more. But if, if you're someone who, who gets jazzed up with Eye of the Tiger, more power to you. Set, have that be your go-to song on your iPhone that, that every time your phone rings, that's what plays. But for folks who um, uh, maybe want to have this daily routine that they can get into, I think it's a, it's a great option. So I wanted to make sure and mention it. Um, just because I, I think the idea that it's both motivating and educating is a great combination and, and something that a lot of folks can get something out of. Um, you know, I, I like to do one other thing with my guests when they come on, because in my opinion, we are heading into a transitory phase of real estate. And since you have this great, unique perspective, I mean, you're someone who has clients who work in one state, live in one state and have properties potentially anywhere in the country and you have lots of folks doing this, if you were to, to put your finger in the wind to try to gauge the health of different segments of the real estate market, and clearly you'd be most educated on folks who have rental properties, what are you seeing? If you were try, if you were asked to rub your crystal ball, where would you say things are going over the next year? Yeah, I would, I, I, and I, 
I'm not sure what your other guests can say, but <laughs> I would say, you know, hold down the court. I would definitely say I think it's going to get a little bit rocky. Um, I, I, I would just say personally, remember, we've done this particular business for just about, I'll probably say eight years. This is our eighth mm-hmm. year. And so if you put it from, I'll call it the real estate cycle, we kind of came in at when a lot of people were getting really hurt. Right. Mm-hmm. So, and and one of the things I'd say is I'm really, really involved with a lot of real estate investment groups, probably more so than a lot of people. And that's locally. And locally, I'm outside the Chicago market. And I'm sure it's just like California. You can't talk about uh, Chicago and not think you're not talking about a whole bunch of different markets. That's right. not just like, oh, well, the Chicago market. <laughs> Well, that's not true. You know, 50 miles this way or that way, and it's pretty different. Yeah, you know, in some markets in my local area, 50 feet one direction or another can completely change what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, right. No, absolutely. Same here. And uh, so let's just go from there. So what I would say is that I, I would tell you that I just attended one last week that was just outside of the Chicago area. Just to give your listeners some perspective. So right. just outside of when I say the Chicago area, I guess I mean the you know, the downtown what we would refer to mm-hmm. blue. And you know, there's about, I don't know, I'll say fifty cranes in the air, which means, you know, about fifty new buildings going up multi family. And it's really, really hurting these investors that are well, kinda if you're you're familiar with Lee Field, right? Just outside of the loop. Mm-hmm. And here they are hurting. The rents have kind of stalled out. Um, so this, my perspective is a little bit different because it's not pricing as much as what it's doing to the rents now. Mm-hmm. You remember they've had nothing but escalation, escalation in California everywhere, right? Rents just became so outrageous. So I just think, you know, I don't feel from what we've seen that jobs have ever really recovered. I think that's what it comes down to, mm-hmm. you know? So we're still seeing, you know, when when things start to stall like that a little bit, I, I, I don't know. I so are rents stalling in Chicago? I, Is that what I'm hearing? Well, you're hearing, yes, because of the amount of, and that's, that's not just in Chicago, what's happening, and I don't want to say they're stalling, they've done nothing but increase. So mm-hmm. this is, you know, we're, we're talking about really the pulse as of September 22nd, right? Right, right. So we're saying that we're seeing people, um, first of all, I'll call it for us in this area, but not just this area. I'm not sure about, I won't speak to exactly on California, but we're seeing a market um, that slows down in the fall, but never as much as it has. Like, in other words, the market's starting to move from March to begin when people want to move. And it's starting to end more at the end of July. And we're seeing yeah. that nationwide. So that's not specifically Chicago. I can definitely Where agree with that. In California, we've seen this, or at least in my market in California, we've seen the same thing. The market is starting earlier. Yes, yeah, same thing here. And we think we're, we're attributing that shift mostly to school starting earlier and earlier. And I'm pretty sure that's a pretty big nationwide trend where, you know, so many are starting now middle of August. So people are trying to be settled by the end of July. So if they're moving, it's, it's certainly earlier. And so I, I just say we have, you know, that's probably a bigger answer than you wanted, but we're definitely seeing some changes. How's yeah. that? We're okay. definitely seeing some caution. Some caution. Okay. So, and, and one thing I've been suggesting for folks is that are just doing the investing. One thing we like to do here, there's a couple of great reports that look back one year and say, if you had bought a home in this location or this metro area one year ago, how would that property have performed for you over the last year? So it's a great ranking. I can't remember who does it. It's either Inman or one of these other guys. But in any event, uh, in looking at those and seeing a bit of a slowdown in a lot of areas, the advice I've been giving is to give themselves a little bit more elbow room in their investments. If, if, if you're somebody where your cash flow is just barely acceptable, maybe you need to figure out a way to make that a little bit better. Maybe you need to be in a position where you're not going to be budgeting for that dramatic rent increase year after year for the next five years. Maybe you need to be a little bit more conservative just to give yourself some elbow room, even though I would agree with that. Okay. I certainly agree with that. 
Okay, good. I, I, I just like to get the opinion of folks who are out there doing still in the real estate world, but just doing things a little bit differently than I am. It's, it's, it's good to sort of get that input from folks. Yeah, I, I think it's super valuable for your listeners, too, to kind of get all those different perspectives because we are all kind of seeing a different piece of the same market. And I think the best example you gave is 50 feet away, you know, right. that's in any given market. So then when you start to try to look at the nation, and I think, unfortunately, when people put it in publications and stuff, you know, well, there's this chart, California's doing this, Illinois is doing this. Well, that's, you know, that's always so neighborhood specific, you know. Right, right. All right, Linda, why don't we go ahead and share the URL where folks can find you one more time. I'll also include that in the show notes for today's show for those of you who don't catch it here in, in our chat. But Linda, go ahead and share that URL one more time uh, for folks who want to try to get to it as soon as possible. Sure. Those that would like to you know, spend some time on their goals, it would be mylandlordhelper.com slash free or just go to the website mylandlordhelper.com. Take a look around if you're interested in the strategy, great. If that's something, a benefit we could provide, we'd be happy to. Um, otherwise, they can email me at Linda L at securepay1.com, and that's all spelled out. Secure Perfect. Pay one. All right. Well, Linda, I really appreciate you spending so much of your valuable time with us. Uh, you've given us some great things to think about and another option that could really solve problems for those new investors that are very worried about getting those calls early in the morning. So thank you very much for, for being so generous with your time. Oh, well, thank you again for having me and for providing this service for your audience. You bet. Have a great day. You too.